Hi, welcome to this video. In this video will be passing variables inside of a component inside of configurable workspaces. This is part three of um, a series of tutorials that I've done on configurable workspaces and opening modals um, and declarative actions, etc. You can follow along with a article that I wrote that I'll link to in the description below. And here's that article. All of my next experience stuff, by the way, is now at nextexp.jessms.com. You can find configurable workspace stuff there, UI builder and custom component development. For this tutorial, we're here at passing variables into the modal. So just a brief view at what we're going to create, the button, and it's passing two variables from the form. If you change one of those, then even without saving, you click on the button again and it's passed. So the value gets passed even without having to save the record. That's what we're going to do today. So if you followed along with the previous tutorials, you will have many of the required records that you need that make this all uh, work. If not, if you're doing your own thing, you need to uh, figure out some stuff along the way. It's not impossible, but it's a bit more tricky. All right, first step, adding the parameters to your UIB page. So I like to use SNUtils for navigating around service now. So I just type in UIB to open UI Builder. I know we were working in the service operations workspace. I know that's on page two, so we just can, can just go there. And then we're going to go to uh, our page, our variant. This is what we defined in the first tutorial. And you see that here we've got two parameters, but we want to add some parameters to that. So we do that by going to settings, going to general, then going to the page parameters and then adding here required parameter. And then under optional parameters, we're going to add optional parameter. That's all we need to do. To ask us if, it, if we want to sync these parameters, we do. That's all fine. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to, well, you usually you we will be able to add a test value here, but uh, for some reason that's not working in UI Builder right now. Uh, I think that's a bug, but usually you'll be able to add test values there. And then here we can just add some stylized text as a component. You want to configure that manually and we want to duplicate that. So we've got two. Then we go to the text field. We bind with data, we type in context. We go to the props. These are the parameters. And then here we've got the required parameter. I'm going to do that once again, bind to data, context, props, and then we want to go to the optional parameter like that. And then we can save that. So we've got our parameters that are defined that they can be passed into the page and we've bound them to these two components. Now there's one little snag we need to be aware of. If we go to the variant collection, if you followed along with the previous tutorials, you'll remember that we had these um, two UX app route records that we needed. Because if you only work with one, with the original, that's, that's this one, what happens is, as soon as you replace the macro component, macro component with the uh, record that you want the model to appear on, and you fill in this field, the parent macro component composition element ID, then the, um, the page and the variant disappear from the overview of pages and variants, which makes it very difficult to, to work with. So a way around that is to leave that record as is. I just added the default suffix to it uh, and then to, to add an app route and to make the modal, to configure the modal through this second app route. There's one a little snag with that though, is that as soon as you uh, update the parameters of the page, like we just did, they get updated only for the original and you're still left needing to update them for um, for the other one, which we'll do right now. Required parameter, optional parameter. If you don't do this, it won't work. So it's quite important. All right, cool. I don't think we need to save, but just to be sure, 
Let's have a quick peek at what's next. So we added the parameters. We updated the app routes. We did the test values, we bound them. All right, so we're on to the declarative action. So we created an action bar declarative action in the first tutorial. We can go back to that record. Here we are. And on this record, there's an advanced view, which we'll be using. So if you go to the advanced view, there's a payload map. So what you can do here is you can take um, fields from the payload definition. So for instance, for us, that's the sysid and the table. We've got those in there. We've not yet got the required and optional parameter in there. And I'll show you uh, why in a minute. But this allows you to map those to fields coming from the form inside of um, configurable workspaces. So how do we get them there? We get them there by updating our payload definition. So we need to go to the payload definition record, open that in a new tab. And then here we've got two keys. We've got fields and params. Fields corresponds to required parameters. So I'll just make sure it's not necessary to have the correct amount of spaces. I just like to do that. Make sure we don't have any typos. Required parameter. And then params. This will be our optional one. There we go. That looks correct. Double checking the spelling. Save. Right. So then we can close this. We can go back to our declarative action definition, refresh that page. And then here in the payload map, it should show up. Yes, we've got a required parameter. And we've also got the other one. Here, what you can do, you can reference some of these action model fields. And the one we want to reference is fields, which is a data object. And this contains all the fields that are visible on the record in, in configurable workspaces. It's important, only the visible ones. So even if there's a field that's defined on the record, but that's not visible, it won't be accessible. You can access them through the fields object. You go like this, you go to the field, and then you need to add this key for uh, obtaining the value. We do the same for the optional parameter. So we go to fields, description, and we need to access the value. Double check. We're spelling mistakes. The reason I'm double checking is because if you make one mistake, it won't work, but it will not tell you why it's not working. All right. Um, and with that defined, I think that was the last step. So let me just double check. Open the payload, we did that. Define the structure, we did that. Save the record, map it to dynamic types, and test it out. Okay, so we just need to test it out as a last step. Go to an incident. And here we are at our button. And here we see it's loaded the number and it's loaded the uh, description. And then the cool thing is that if you update this, then without having to update the, um, uh, without having to save the form again, it's updated here. So that concludes today's tutorial. If you thought it was useful, let me know. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the YouTube comments below and I'll try to get to those as well. See you in the next video.